All right, so before we start setting this thing up, let's take a quick look at what this thing is. This is an XCY PFSense Mini Intel Celeron four port uh, gigabit Intel Ethernet ports. So I figured since I've been messing around with OpenSense lately and I actually really do like it so far, don't have too many complaints about it. I wanted to get it off the laptop eventually because uh, I use that laptop for some other items like testing different OSs or possibly slaving up drives. So I didn't want to keep the laptop there permanently. So this from AliExpress is, I checked out some of the other, basically this is a clone or I don't know, this may be the original. Like, you know, if you go into like Protect Lee or whatever, um, it's basically the same box. Uh, they're just generic boxes. Uh, so for Intel Gigabit, it's a Celeron. Uh, it does not have a SNI instruction set, uh, but that's not really necessary for my home needs uh, or for even really small implementations uh, that aren't going to be using a lot of, um, <clears throat> especially like a lot of VPN traffic, encrypted traffic, stuff like that. So it is a basically a computer. So you know, don't, doesn't have to just run a firewall appliance. You, you can use it. You can probably put Linux on it. You can probably do a bunch of stuff with it. It's passive cooling. And that's pretty much what the board looks like. We'll see it better when I crack it open here. And the price was like in between here. I think you paid like, I think I paid like 120 ish plus another 20 in duty. So it's like 140 Canadian, something like that. They have support for DDR3 memory, I believe up to eight gigs. Um, supports uh, MSATA SSD. There's an AMI BIOS for Intel, this model, Ethernet card, gigabit, one VGA port, two USB 2.0, and it's a 12 volt, five amp adapter. Uh, one of the things that does concern me about these is how cheap the adapters are, uh, whether they will be able to last or not. Uh, yeah, passive cooling and about 20, 20 watts of idle consumption. Uh, yeah, oh, and here's some demos of having PFSense on it, but we're not gonna be using PFSense. We're gonna be installing OpenSense. Be nice to look at some feedback. Let's take out some feedback. Well received, a blow on to their uh, Windows Pirate above. Machine is much cooler than other models. Solid construction. Yeah, I can say just, I, I've taken it out of the box and it is a uh, hefty. All right, so let's uh, take a look. All right, so let's open the unmarked Chinese box. It's solid aluminum construction here. On the bottom here, you can see that there is a little ventilation hole, a four, four screw mounts, actually eight, I guess. I don't know which is which. Package contents are the PC, the adapter, power cord, one VESA mount, Optional Wi-Fi module, which I don't think we have, and the user manual. Power brick, again, this is 12 volt, uh, five amp. Some type of VESA mount, maybe it's 100 mil. Flipping over to the top, there are no screws here. My guess is that there's four screws on the front, and there are four screws in the rear, and there are four screws on the bottom. Remove the four screws of the bottom cover, remove the bottom cover. Okay, removing the four screws. Okay, bottom screw is out. That doesn't give me access to anything. This must be for a different design because I think I'm gonna need to remove all these. The front screws here, they are not the same size, they are longer. Something was rattling in there. It's like a foot. All right, so we basically removed all the screws. And now I see, I see. Just a little deceiving. I have to actually take out these four screws. Those are what's mounted to the, the mounting pole. Oh, I gotta change my bit here, one sec. Oh, there's some grease there. Okay, there's some grease there for the heat sink. Okay, so there is the board. We have a VGA out. We have probably what's like a fan connector. We have a Molex there, power. We have the memory module here, DDR3, the MSATA, the SATA connector, 
That's for also uh, an external SATA to use with this. We have some jumpers here, a battery, obviously the processors under the main heatsink, four ports, two USB ports, and only one button is accessible in the front. This one says power on, reset, reset switch and power. What are we gonna do with this? So we have a MSATA cheap one, 64 gig MSATA that we're gonna plop in here. Xenio, Xenio, real cheap, 64, whatever. Probably get the job done. And uh, I need to I'll take this screw out. This looks like where the MSATA will mount. Clamp that down. Clamp that back down. So now that is in. Now for memory, I gotta get some memory. All right. All right, so I did find a four gig. Is this crucial? Hynix, four gig. That should fit. Right about here. Snap that into place. Now we have four jigs of memory. That thermal grease is probably crapola. Uh, I'll probably replace it with some better stuff. We just want to make sure that this is going to boot. Come on, baby. Let's do the twist. Come on, baby. Let's do the twist demonetized. Uh, next issue is let's get some power and let's get PFSense load up. Uh, PFSense. Let's get OpenSense loaded onto a USB key. Okay, I'm gonna have to record this part on the phone. So let me just reset this thing. Bay, tr bay trail, delete, enter setup of F11 boot menu. So let's go into the, let me reset it again. Let's go into the BIOS, delete. Okay, so we're in Apito setup utility. Okay, so it's a AMI BIOS. Okay, so the BIOS is pretty old, 2016. Okay, so it does recognize the memory. The date is completely wrong. Uh, hibernation, disabled, sleep state, suspend, disabled, lock legacy resources, uh, land pixie, uh, pixie boot. Yeah, let's enable that. Floppy disk controller configuration, floppy controller, disabled, serial port one, two, oh, parallel, fine, hardware monitor. I don't know what that means. In case probably nothing connected there. There's no fan. There's our voltages. It's the 1800, so it's the dual core that we got. Power technology, inner efficient. I'm gonna say disable that. IP4 Pixie support. Yeah, let's do that. Pixie wait time. What's my valid range? Five. Okay. Set up prompt timeout. Let's increase that to three. All right, save changes and exit. Uh, yeah, save. Okay, so let's see if it boots off the USB key. Okay, there is the OpenSense bootloader. Okay, so we're gonna log in as the installer now. And now we can see that we're at the installer prompt. Uh, select an environment to use the following console. Yes. Yeah, guided. Uh, 300 megabytes, SATA 2, primary. Uh, let's go. APT UFI is recommended. Continue with recommended swap partition. Yes. Okay, so set the root password. Machine is about to be shut down. After machine reached a shutdown state, I can remove the CD. Okay, OpenSense is there, it's booting. There's no ASNI on this uh, thing. Okay, so we are logged in with the default setting. All right, so I just uh, staticked my IP to 1.2 and I'm accessing 1.1, which is the default IP address for OpenSense. So I'm gonna log in. 
Uh, first thing I want to do is I want to go to system and I want to go to firmware and I want to go to updates is I need to go into services, DHCP4, go to the LAN. I need to disable DHCP on this interface. Okay, then I can go back to interfaces, LAN, and I'm gonna change this to DHCP just so it can get on the internal network so I can run the updates. So I'll apply that change. Okay, I should have internet connection now, so I will go into system, firmware, updates. Check for updates. All right, we have checking for updates, right. So 179, I wanna apply that right away. Okay, we are back. Okay, we're on 18.79 and we're gonna go into system, ba -ba -ba -ba, firmware, plugins. And we're gonna enable some of the plugins we had on the old system. I think that is good enough. So we'll leave it at that until we get this set up on the network properly and replace the current laptop that's in play right now.